www.brfcs.com. By the fans. For the fans. Since 1996. This is a BRFCS special podcast, and uh, we have a very special guest, Shebi Singh, um, who, as you will all know, is the global advisor for, for Blackburn Rovers Football Club. Uh, first of all, I'd like to wel- welcome you, Shebi, and thank you on behalf of BRFCS for giving us your time uh, to, to answer some questions. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, my apologies, it's, it's taken a while, but uh, <laughs> it's never too late to talk to, to the fans. Uh, and uh, I'm glad, you know, that uh, I'm here and uh, we can do this interview. Excellent. Um, we've had a lot of interviews but um, that we've listened to on Radio Lancashire and various other forums. Uh, but I wanted to start by uh, talking to you about your football career. So, what was Shebby seeing the footballer like? Because <laughs> we've not heard about this. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously... You know, Shabi is, uh, is is my family name or, or a nickname. Uh, you know, my full name is Selvageth Singh. Uh, I was the first generation uh, of um, uh, first generation born in Malaysia of uh, Punjabi uh, parents, and um, grew up playing football. And I played football for eighteen years. Uh, of course, you know, we in Malaysia we we had amateur football and then we had semi professional football and then uh, professional football. So I I started in nineteen seventy eight. And uh, by the time we came around to 1990, we were semi-professional. And after 1993, uh, 1994, we became a fully professional. So I have seen the growth of football in Malaysia. I've uh, always been a big uh, football fan. And uh, out of those 18 years that I played, <clears throat> out of an 18-year career, I, nine were also for my country, <clears throat> where I played against some very, very big teams, you know, because... Um, you know, on training tours, you know, either coming to Europe or uh, teams like um, Aston Villa, for example, Newcastle, uh, United, Watford, and of course the English national team who came through in um, 1992. That was my last international game. Uh, and uh, I, I thought, you know, at that age it was difficult to play international football. But I continued in domestic football until I was 36. And uh, after that, uh, I got on television uh, as a football pundit for 15 years. Uh, first four years, I was in Malaysia with uh, Astro Supersport. And the last 11, I was with ESPN Star Sports, based out of Singapore broadcasting across Asia. Um, I love my football with a passion. Shall we sing the footballer on the pitch, character-wise, on the pitch, um, Roy Keane, win, win. And win, yeah. Um, off the pitch, I would say, you know, Shabby Singh, the footballer. I, I have always been a student of the game. I'm not an expert. I, I, I'm not someone who can claim to know it all. But I am a student of the game. I think deeply about my football. I, 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 I will talk, you know, to anyone about football because it's all about learning. Um, and yes, I have my own ideas. I, ho- I have my own views. And uh, obviously, you know, when you look at, you know, what has, how football has innovated itself, uh, it does get a little frustrating at times, you know, where you find that, you know, while uh, football is innovating, there are uh, teams that do not innovate as, as quickly. Uh, but then again, I mean, that's the beauty of the game. You mentioned that you went into punditry, uh, football punditry after your career. How was that jump from being a player to a pundit for you? And... From what I hear, you're, you're quite forthright in your views when, when, when you're giving news on game. Uh, yes, indeed. You know, I have uh, I have my views and, and I'm not afraid to voice them. And, uh, you know, it's it's um, I, I've been told I polarise opinion. You know, I don't intend to do that. You know, it, it's, it's just me. Uh, and it was an easy transition for me because on the pitch, I had been that kind of a footballer. I, I you know, I... I, I talked through games, I, you know, I talked to my teammates through games and, uh, you know, I enjoyed great success a- as a player and uh, I've always been someone who's always had an opinion or a thought to share with the coaches. <coughs> I, you know, I wasn't very popular with my coaches when I was a player, but, uh, you know, I can, you know, look back at my collection of medals and say, hey, I didn't do too bad, you know, and, 
and and once again you know football for me it's about that you know it, it's about having an opinion and not being afraid to share it because only by sharing opinions you can learn only by sharing opinions you can improve you know in whatever you do improve as a football pundit improve as a player uh, so so for me you know i i sometimes you know i'm baffled by the reaction that i get you know to to, to things that i say so you know you know all i believe in is like you know get on with, get on with it you know it, there's no such thing as you know this is you know i am right or i i i i am or you are wrong no it's about you know seeing things differently by the end of the day i would say i have been proven right on more occasions than i've been proven wrong so you know so be it um and previous to taking up this role as a global advisor you were involved with a, another football related role for venkis what was that and, and what were you doing yes i was um, head of football development asia uh, my brief was to brand to promote and to market blackman rovers in asia and uh, in the one year uh, that um, i i did that role uh, we set up junior leagues in india because for me we talk about you know development uh, that is the key I, i i was not going to be like other clubs you know you come in you do a saturday sunday promotional thing and and then you leave the country uh, with uh, with people's money you know i decided and the venkis gave me the full support that the only way to develop the game and also to brand and promote uh, blackburn rovers by allowing people you know to to enjoy long term benefits and junior leagues the junior leagues that that i set up in india uh, gained uh, a popularity you can see kids you know if kids are playing 22 games over a period of uh, 11 weeks you know now that is development you know I, and and for me i i had my ideas my thoughts we have got a, a small uh, partnership with a professional club in singapore balestic khalsa who carry our venkis uh, logo on their sleeves so you know the the efforts to brand promote and market uh, blackburn rovers were ongoing <coughs> uh, beginning to build up momentum and um, unfortunately with the fortunes of blackburn rovers football club um you know not going in the right direction so hence i find myself here with still having that that uh, brief i still have that 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 profile so <clears throat> likewise now you know from uh, head of football development asia um i was appointed global advisor so global advisor is i think a unique term in 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 uk football so so what is a global advisor yeah, i mean it's it's <clears throat> it's really funny because you know you know there there is a new there is a new position and and uh, you know it is uh, straight away it is a no no because this is not a conventional uh, uh, position i mean come on you know grow up uh, you know what i mean it's global advisor because i was doing uh, football development asia and now you know i'm here doing football development as well for the for the for the professional club so it's pretty much global now i mean it's so easy to explain and as advisor yes you know uh, because conventionally you will use the word you know director or consultant uh, you know things like that but you know it's 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 advisor because you know for me most of the time is uh, to advise on how things uh, should should move move forward the implementation is left to the people who are in roles and responsibilities so that's what i do uh, i mean i i i i take a supervisory role uh, you know and say this is how we're going to do it you know this is how we're going to do it but i'm not restricted in that this is how we're going to do it and i have i must do it no i have a team of very very nice people at ewood you know and we 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 have we have a, a technical a team set up as well so 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 that is why you know as global advisor you know uh, i'm there to ensure you know that uh, we move in the right direction we do the right things uh, you know uh, and uh, i don't understand why the confusion over there and in terms of decision making how much power do you have in terms of like you said you you devolve out decisions and and it's done on a 
on a committee basis. But as yourself, how much decision making power do you have? Well, I think this is uh, again, you know, uh, a situation where people want to know how much power have you get. Well, I mean, what is power? Power belongs to the owners. They are powerful. They are, you know, the the, the decision makers. You know, now as a global advisor, <coughs> I always am, am am talking to 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 my bosses. You know, like we have already set out, you know, uh, uh, certain things that need to be done with the club, and I've been sent here to do those things. So power, power. I think. Over here in England, there's only one thing that people want to hear. You know, this has become a culture in England. You know, it's all about: Do you have the power to sack the manager? That's all people care about here. For me, that is very, very narrow thinking. This is a football club. A football club has got so many responsibilities, you know, across the board, and have got so many functions and, and roles in community as well. So there are so many things. Things it doesn't just revolve around a one particular aspect of, of the football club. So power is with the owners. And when you report to the owners, you said, do you report to a specific one of the owners, or is it the family as a whole that you, you report uh, to? The family, the family, Madam, Mr. Venki, Mr. Balaji. You know, my everyday uh, 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 day-to-day contact is, is Mr. Balaji. Uh, I have met uh, Mr. Venki already now twice uh, in, in, in a very short space of time. And uh, uh, Madam, as the chairperson, you know, because of the distance of, of where I am and, and where Madam is. And don't forget, I mean, you know, Madam has got so many other responsibilities. You know, she runs a conglomerate. So my day-to-day uh, contact is, is with Mr. Balaji, but I can tell you that you know, uh, if ever there is there is a family that is more tightly knit than the Vankis, I've not met them yet. So it's a, it's pretty much you know, it's you you, you talk to uh, Mr. Balaji, you are talking to Mr. Vanki and Madam at the same time. So that's how I would put it. It's not about you talk to three, uh, you know, that the the three um, uh, bosses. And who do you talk to? No, no, no. They are they are one. They are one. My bosses are one. And I mean, we don't know the family like you do. How do they work in terms of decision making? Because you know, we've never really had an insight into to what their thinking is and how they decide things. You know, maybe you can give us like an insight as to what their motivations are and how they work as a family in terms of decision making. Well, while I was um, under the um, payroll of, of uh, the Vankies from August 2011, you know, um, I had a specific um, role to, to play and I, and I was doing that and they have they were very, very supportive of my ideas and my thoughts about football development in Asia. And likewise now, you know, they have uh, appointed me as the global advisor and I, you know, and they have given me all the support that is uh, you know, th- there's nothing that I do here uh, without their blessings. But what is very, very important, and, and I like to think, you know, that with my years of experience in the game, I, I think I'm, you know, I'm a sounding board as well, you know. And at the same time, it's to, you know, to look at football from a, from a broader perspective, which which you need when you're the owners of a professional football club, you know, and and... and Across the board, you know, I've had m- tremendous support. Never one, it has been why on the phone. Ne- the word why has never been because I break it down. I, I break down every uh, decision to, to, to be made. Uh, you know, I, I break down uh, every um, situation there is. And, and for a football club, it's always, you know, the, there's three things you look at. You look at the immediate term, the short term, and the long term. And I explain you know, this to my bosses and only then, if I am satisfied with what with what I want to do, only then, you know, uh, I, I, I go to them. I, ju- I don't just go to them because I have an idea. No, 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 no. What is that idea? What are the benefits of the idea in the immediate term, in the short term, in the long term? And if I find that, oh, it's good for the immediate term but not beneficial in the long term, I mean, 
I have, like I say, I'm a student of the game. So I study those 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 ideas and situations, and I innovate. You know, in some way to say this is what we need to do uh, for for you know uh, for for the club. So it's a very much a two-way conversation. You know, and please do not underestimate. You know. Uh, my boss's knowledge of the game. Maybe 18 months ago, there might have been some doubts. But since I've been with them, you know, like I said, do not underestimate them. There is stronger resolve now. Uh, yes, what has happened has happened, you know. We can't change the past, but we can try to influence the future. And that is how uh, my bosses uh, have approached this. Uh, one of our members wanted to ask about the club structure at the moment. Um, with Vinith not being here... Um, How's the board working in yourself? Do you have to have like a fit and proper test or are you going to be appointed to the board or how's the club structure working in a formal sense? Well, uh, in, in the short time I've been here, you know, I've been you know, extremely, extremely busy, uh, you know, with, with, with a lot of things. Um, I am I'm not uh, on the board, uh, so to speak, you know, because I, I, I really... At this moment in time, I've just got so many other things to do than to worry about, you know, you know whether, you know. So, so for me, that that is immaterial. If my bosses say, Shabby, you know, th this is uh, what where you need to be at this moment. When the time is right, if they, uh, you know, tell me something, I I I will do it. But right now, you know, the focus is uh, on purely getting the club up and running. And I mean, it has been up and running now. That you know, th there's a better atmosphere, and is to you know give the fans a competitive team to support and, you know, uh, gain promotion. So for me, that, you know, that that is not something that, that, that I'm worried about or even thinking about. Right. Moving on to the team, um, obviously we've had some transfer activity this summer, which has been more than we've had in the previous few transfer windows. Are you involved in the process of identifying transfer targets or is that something that the manager does or is it in conjunction uh, I think you know what is very important uh, is um, to have another perspective right um, I don't like and I never want to use the word relegation and uh, but obviously that shows up a lot of weaknesses now we need to turn those weaknesses into our strengths so there is a certain type of player that we need or certain type of quality that we need or certain type of characteristics that we need, you know. And, uh, and I've had, a, uh, I've had a, a very, very good working relationship with Steve. Uh, <coughs> and uh, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the players that have been signed, you know, will benefit the club uh, in more ways than one. It's common knowledge which Steve sort of... Um admitted uh, that we're after the Huddersfield striker Jordan Rhodes and a lot of our members are asking but uh, is that now a realistic proposition or has it moved away from the well, we, the last few Well, we weeks? put in two bids, right? We put in two, two bids, official bids, you know, and uh, both times, uh, you know, um, uh, respectfully Huddersfield have rejected us. So at this m moment, you know, we, it, it, is, um, it is a situation where we have put in two bids, you know, the club has rejected us. But now it's, you know, it, it, it's it's up to the player maybe if he wants to continue at Huddersfield, maybe, you know, if he's unhappy at Huddersfield, maybe. So, you know, we, we, we are, I mean, I think what, what the fans are trying to understand is have we, like, given up? No, we will never give up on any player who we think can be beneficial to us. Never. You know, within our price range, you know, the, the qualities that a certain player has. And this is common in world football, you know. Maybe I'm the only one who, who's, who's brave enough to sit here and say it, you know. Because half the clubs, half the managers will not have, have the, the guts to say it. Yes, we will always be interested. And, and, and with Jordan, um, you know, at the same time, we must respect that, you know, the season has started. And we would feel the same if somebody, you know... Uh, persistently, you know, wanted one of our players. So we don't want to disrupt that. So, yes, you know, we, we, we are, you know, we are still waiting. Uh, we hope, you know, that uh, we can acquire uh, Jordan Rhodes. So would there be a third bid or are you, are you, no, no. Well, I think, you know, we have to understand, you know, that 
Jordan Rhodes is playing his first season in the championship as well. We are in the championship, you know. He scored a lot of goals, uh, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, I think, you know, I think I'll, I'll say the way the fans would like to hear it, you know. I don't think we are in a position to break the bank. Right? Yeah. yeah. We are not in a position to break the bank. Yeah. And if Jordan Rhodes isn't signed, are there other striking targets or are there generally before the transfer window? Are we going to see more activity, particularly? If most certainly in the striker's position. Yeah. Most most certainly, you know. Uh, and uh, it, it all depends also between now and the end of the season. You know, if uh, there are... And this is possibly good because, you know, there's a, a game on Wednesday night, there's a game on Saturday night. And after that, you know, there's always a time for assessment to think that, you know, we, we the, the team started the preparation, you know, and now we have actually gotten into the uh, into the nitty-gritty of things. Do we, you know, do we need to strengthen a particular area and things like that? So, so yes, I mean, you know, we, we, we keep our, uh, our options open. Okay. Um, obviously, last week uh, there were lots of press co comment about uh, comments that you made at the action group meeting regarding Steve Keen and Morton Pedersen and you came out and said that uh, that they'd been taken out of context the comments you made can you you know well I, I wanted uh, to know about one, one I've never said anything was taken out of context and um, you know there were one or two things um, that were said uh, you know uh, tongue-in-cheek or you know in response to you know to to some fans you know who just you know sometimes to, to, to refuse to see uh, uh, refuse to look at the broader view you know so you know some things that were said uh, uh, were were upsetting uh, for Steve and Morton and uh, I'm the first one uh, to admit that if I've said something wrong I, I will apologize I apologize to Steve I apologize to Mots you know. Um, not only personally, but it was in the papers as well. Let's move on. Okay, um, Steve Keane's hugely unpopular. I'm sure you've you've gathered that from from fans. Um, from, and you know, over the last eighteen months, the club's been relegated. Um, you know, what will it take for Steve Keane to be sacked? Because you know, we did a poll of over eight thousand fans, and ninety seven percent were disapproving of Steve Keane even uh, now. Like two weeks ago. Uh, yes, indeed. You know, it, it is a, a situation that um, uh, does not seem to to go away. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think it will be the owners, as the bosses, as the owners of the club, you know, who will decide on that. Okay, and and you know, there's rumours abound that he has points targets. Is, and which he'd previously not had. Can you confirm or deny that he has certain targets? Without revealing what they are, just confirm or deny that he must meet certain targets. In football, when you are a football manager, you are aware of um, um, you are aware of the responsibilities. You know, every football manager in the world, you know, be it Sir Alex Ferguson or be it you know somebody coaching, you know, uh, in, in, in Africa or in Asia, every football manager, you know, knows that there are uh, targets to meet, you know, whether it is winning the title or whether it's a qualification for Europe or whether it is maintaining your position in the Premier League or, you know, to avoid relegation. In the Championship, it's likewise, you know, you want to get promoted, you know, how, what are your aims? Every manager has got a similar situation. At the start of every season, every manager starts on on, on a clean slate, you know. And likewise, you know, uh, the manager of Blackburn Rose Football Club is the same. So this is not, you know, please do not see this as, you know, it's, you know, a shabby saying this. No, this is, this is the world of football. Wake up. Smell the coffee. This is the world of football. When you choose to be in a certain position, you are well aware of the hazards of the job. So it's so. Let's not you know make a big issue out of this. He said, she said, or you, you know this. I mean, it's, to me, it's ridiculous because I think you know where where I come from. 
you know, dealing with hundreds of millions of, of viewers on, on television, on ESPN, Star Sports. And, you know, it, it, it's really funny that, you know, people still, you know, are, are not understanding of, of situations like that. You know, certain responsibilities, certain targets are, are set in stone for football managers. So, so everybody is in, in, in a similar situation. And does he have like short term, medium term, long term targets, or is it is he going to be judged over a season, or is he going to be judged at certain points in the season? Well, the owners have set some some targets, right? And promotion is key. Promotion is key, right? How you do it, how we get there, you know. Um, situations arise in football. Who is to say that AVB would not have won the Champions League with Chelsea last year? Right? So if there are situations during the season, you know, where there is anxiety or, you know, agitation or things like that, but we pray, you know, that, you know, that the worst is over, right? Now the team will, 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 will achieve uh, results on a consistent basis. That's what we hope for, you know, and we want to look, that, look at, at, at things that way. You know, I don't, I'm not the what if kind of a person. I've never been, I'm so positive in my life that I've been described as being cocky. Yes, I want to be like that. You know, let's be positive. Or what if this, what is that? Why are we miring ourselves, you know, in negativity, in, in surrounding ourselves with darkness and that clouds our day to day decisions? You know, why? Let's look ahead. Let's look forward to the sun, you know, rising tomorrow, you know. And so, so, so let's adopt that attitude, and I think attitude is very, very important in this. Talking about attitude, um, obviously the atmosphere at Ewood has been rather negative uh, at home games, with you know negative chanting towards the the, the manager in particular. Um, many fans have not renewed season tickets on the sole issue of of Steve Keane still being the manager. Uh, you know, how are you going to turn that around? How are you going to turn you know, thousands of funds not attending games at uh, Ewood Park. Well, around. it's 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 not it's not uh, going to be easy. You know, it's not going to be easy. Uh, but um, I think what is important is you know uh, to for the fans to know you know that what is the direction the cl- club is taking as as a whole. It, you know, it, the club belongs to the fans. Yes, and as a whole, you know, rather than just you know, look at one specific, I think you've got to look at the club as a whole and think, you know, this club, you know, and the football team, you know, what have we got out on the pitch? Are we competitive? Are we giving our all? You know, are we, you know, uh, uh, getting the results, you know, uh, where people wake up on, on uh, you know, on a Sunday morning and have a smile because they, they, their team has won? I, I, I think, you know, there are certain things that you put on the shelf for, uh, for, 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 the, for, for the bigger picture. You know, and, and I would, and, and I'm trying my best now to convince the fans that you know, let's let's look at at, at that. Let's look beyond uh, one specific, you know, and and and, uh, and and then we'll see. Okay, I'm going to talk about some rumors, which hopefully you can debunk or confirm, because these have been floating around over the last sort of six months. So this is an opportunity to ask somebody who's employed by the club, and maybe you can confirm or deny them. Um, the, the first one is that the Steve Keane can't be sacked as manager because he has a, a, a stake in the club. Do you know about this? Have you heard about this? Can you confirm or deny it? Okay, in my country, if you wanted to know the stakeholders of a firm of, or, or a corporation, I think you need to pay about 20 ringgit. So that's about 4 quid. You go to the registrar of companies, you pay that money and you can get a list of, of, uh, of shareholders or shareholding of any firm. That's my answer to that. Right. Okay. Um, the, the next one is uh, players like Vukcevic uh, haven't been involved in, in, in matches because they have some appearance bonus clauses in the contract. That every time they play, they, they get some certain amount of money. Is that one of the reasons why these players have not been involved? Oh, come on now. I mean, that, that is a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> if you buy a player and a player has got ability and talent and you don't use him because there is a, 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 an appearance a, a, a bonus on that and so you play 
second or third or fourth choice players because of that. No, that that's ridiculous. No, no, no. It, it, it doesn't happen. It, it doesn't happen at this club. No, no. Okay. Um, and in terms of players, are there players going to be leaving the club? And, and if so, uh, know. yes. You know, we we are um, well aware. You know that uh, there are players who put in a transfer request. Uh, in fact, uh, Rado Sar Petrovic, uh, Rado. Uh, for me, he was top man. You know, he he spoke to me and he said, he said, Shabby, look, he said, you know, I've I've seen that we are buying a lot of defensive midfielders, and also he said, you know, particularly my style of play in the championship will not be suitable because the championship is is just too quick, you know, and I would like to leave, uh, you know, to 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 seek um, my uh, my career uh, to build my my career somewhere else because I also want to play for the Serbian national team, Rado. You know, if you if you ever listen to this, I have utmost respect for you because you are one of those players, and there's very few in the world who actually looked, uh, you know, a, a, a into the mirror and saw, you know, what 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 was the truth, you know. And so for Rado Petrovic, you know, I wish him all the very best. You know, I hope he's a big success, and, and you know, and hope you know that uh, one day. Uh, we'll meet and uh, you know and with, with him as a top class player. I mean, for a player to be that honest to assess himself and his future and what he what, what he can bring to a football team, you know, hats off. Hats off. No, that was really good that he's identified weaknesses and and moved on. Well, he has you know complete realization of himself, which is very important. And Stephen Lanzonzi obviously is hugely popular with the, with the Rovers fans. Are we likely because it's coming towards the end of transfer window and he's still still here? So people well, are starting to get hopeful that he might remain here. Well, you know, with Stephen, it is a situation where I have met um, with uh, his father, who is also his agent, and uh, you know, um, Fidel, his father, says to me that his son does not want to play in the championship. His son wants to play at uh, at the higher level. He wants to play in the Premier League. So likewise, you know, we are waiting uh, to hear from uh, from other clubs if they're going to put in a, a bid for him, you know, whether to take him on loan or to sign him permanently. So it pretty much looks like the situation is where the player, you know, uh, doesn't doesn't want to play in the championship. Period. Yeah. And Martin Olsen, there's reports this morning that Aston Villa. Uh, of offering two and a half million plus Stephen Warnock is that something that would interest Rovers or ah uh, that will have to be a decision uh, to be made by by the manager. You know, Martin uh, did write to us I think about four or five weeks ago, but since then, you know, he's been uh, receiving treatment uh, and uh, he's recovering fast. And uh, at the end of the day, like like I said, that's the decision the manager will have to take. Okay, last few questions. Um, Jerome Anderson obviously helped the owners to, to, to buy the club and he was employed by the trustees uh, to find a buyer. Does he still have a role at the club or is, is he now not involved in, in any capacity um, other than... I have, spoken, uh, I have spoken to uh, Jerome Anderson as I have spoken to a lot of agents. Uh, unfortunately, you know, none of the players uh, that were put forward... SR, you know, with dozens of agents, um, just, you know, did not meet our requirements. Uh, and uh, so that is the that is the truth, you know, that, uh, yes, he is a football agent. And, uh, he, you know, at this moment, he didn't have players who, who interested us. Okay. Um, obviously, the youth policy at Rovers over the last few years has done really well uh, with numerous young players coming through. Um, that concern that that we're not going to be investing in the youth policy. Can you can you say well, what that, what the plans are for the future? Well, that, it's something that, that, that we're that very proud of. Is furthest away from the truth, you know. Uh, to the fans out there, please believe me. Right, we are now uh, desperately uh, seeking category one status for our academy. Uh, and uh, yes, we 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 made the applications. You know, we were awarded category two on a couple of things which we are not happy about. Let's put it that way. We are not happy that we didn't get Category 1. We are going to pull out all stops to ensure we get Category 1. That is the investment in the academy. You know, um, My bosses have approved the investment. 
and and we are moving ahead. We're going to have the artificial pitch with lights. We are going to build uh, a main pitch with a stand because of the under twenty ones. So no, please do not believe you know any rumor that you hear. You've heard it from me now that you know the academy is going to you know is is going to be the 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 core as it has been. It has it is going to be the core, and maybe now you know. In the in 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 the in the near future, we will see more and more players from uh, from the academy involved, uh, because you know we are playing in the championship, and this is where I think you know this is the battleground where youngsters either you know show it they can or they can't. And the category one, w- would you resubmit at the end of the season, or is this something that could happen during the season? Well, we we already um, are appealing uh, against that. But we will be in a better position uh, come December when physically, physically, you know, we've got planning permission for the artificial pitch with lights. So once physically work starts or uh, work should start in September and by December we should have everything up, you know, then there will be. But between now and work starting in September, we, we, we are already putting in an appeal. And in terms of monetary terms, what kind of investment is being put in? Because fans will understand. In terms uh, of yes, the fan, uh, the fans, uh, you know, uh, will obviously want to know that you know, five million pounds have been set aside for the for, for the academy, academy improvements, refurbishment, you know, uh, and and uh, of to in order also to achieve uh, category one status. And the the club debt, I know the owners have said that the club is debt free now. Yeah. Is that is that? Is that right? Is or has the debt been moved to India, or how is this being financed? No, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not a finance person, you know, and I've never spoken to to my bosses about that, and I will not uh, pro- uh, be able to provide any answers, not now, not in the future, because that is a specific, you know, uh, which which does not come into my remit. Not in your remit. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And finally, um, yeah. Well, two things. First of all, what do you hope to achieve? In the last next twelve months, you know, what what are your personal sort of goals for the next twelve months? Well, uh, what is important is uh, that the club uh, progresses. You know, of course, uh, the biggest uh, indicator of progress will be promotion. Uh, but we must not understand, you know, that you can, you know, be be only concentrating on one uh, uh, big 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 ambition. But at the same time, you know, a lot of work has to go into making sure that at the end of the day we have built a club and not just built a team. We can build a team you know, for, for promotion but I think what is more important is we need to build a club and these, uh, these two you know, have, um, has to work side by side. Okay, and this podcast will be listened to by 15,000, 16,000 fans at least. Do you have a message for them? Well, to to all the fans out there, you know, uh, thank you very much uh, for being very very supportive of, of me. Uh, yes, there will be situations, you know, where like a family we will have our little squabbles. By the end of the day, I think you know we need uh, we need to be together. We we need to uh, get behind the players uh, on, on the pitch uh, because as a player, I only know uh, too well how valuable it is for the fans to be uh, supporting the team. Please, please come and be our twelfth man. You know, we we are not pretending there are no issues, but you know, let 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 us you know let us work uh, for the greater good um, of the team while we are sorting out those little issues. Okay, well, thank you very much, Shabby, for being so open and forthright with us, and you know, hopefully, we can talk again at the end of the season where we've got promotion. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, uh, Cameron. Thank you very much, Josh. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much.